I'm Senator Bill Brady, and I'm today joined by my colleagues to talk about the future of Illinois. As you all are aware, yesterday, Speaker Madigan once again tried to, to pass out of, passed out of committee a, a short-sighted plan, what he calls a stopgap budget. We're here today collectively to support a long-term solution uh, for the people of Illinois, a solution that include, includes property tax freezes, uh, spending reforms and caps, job creation, term limits, fair maps, and pension reform. All things that we in the Senate, and I know my colleagues in the House have been working over, we're working on over the last year or two. These are the solutions that Illinois needs. We need a comprehensive plan, a plan that will work uh, for the people of Illinois and put this state back on its feet. I'm joined today by my colleagues, and I'd ask each of, uh, 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 three of them uh, to give their comments, and then we'd be happy uh, to respond to any questions you have. And right now, I'd like to ask uh, Representative Demmer to come to the microphone. Hi, good morning. I'm Tom Demmer, State Representative from the 90th District. Uh, what we saw yesterday in the House shouldn't be surprising to anybody. It's the same thing we've seen year after year from Speaker Madigan and the Democrats. Democrats negotiate with themselves behind closed doors and then act surprised when Republicans uh, oppose the plan that was just made available to us just hours before the vote. I can't tell you how disappointing this is. House Republicans have been firm throughout this entire year and uh, in previous years that we're willing to sit down and negotiate with Democrats to make a reasonable, balanced, comprehensive, bipartisan budget. House Democrats are content with the status quo, it seems, as they continue to hop from one stopgap to the next. Uh, and this is a little disconcerting given that we're in the first week of April right now. We have plenty of time in our legislative session to continue working on a full comprehensive budget. It seems very early to go to a stopgap yet again. And it also puts, uh, puts providers and puts those people who rely on state services and state funding uh, in a perpetual state of crisis, not knowing how much money will be appropriated, when the next stopgap will come, and what the process looks like going forward. We still have time to sit down and work together. That's what we should do. That's what my Republican colleagues and I are joined together to say we're willing to do. Um, so far, those calls for bipartisan negotiation have been met with silence. We're here today to renew those calls, and I think you'll see a, re a united Republican front around the idea that we can have a comprehensive, bipartisan, negotiated, balanced budget. Here with further comments is uh, Senator Karen McConaughey. Thank you, Representative. You know, I think what we all share here is a frustration that a comprehensive solution that we can give to the people of Illinois to get this state back on track continues to elude us. And so, you know, trying to boil it down to simple talking points. These are the things that the people of Illinois talk about that are important to them. Take the one right off the top, freezing property taxes. We have some of the highest property taxes in this state in the entire country. And we talk all the time about our businesses leaving the state, about residents leaving the state, that's one of the con biggest contributing factors. We're taxing people out of their homes. Uh, uh, First-time buyers, retirees, individuals who have made a commitment to this state that see that the lack of job creation, the overtaxation, uh, the inability for this state to get back on track is what is preventing people from making a long-term commitment to stay in this state, to raise their kids here, to keep their, their grandkids here. That's what all of us hear every single day when we're out in our communities. It's not just in Republican districts. This is all across the state. These, each of these items that we have identified illustrate the frustration, not just of us, but the frustration of the entire state. And I'm going to turn it over to Representative Bellock. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. I'm Patty Bellock, and I'm the state representative from the 47th District. And I just want to echo the comments that my colleagues have made this, this morning and express how disappointed I was yesterday to have had the stopgap budget come up so fast without any preparation on our part. <clears throat> we all agree that the oh, human service providers, the students, the universities are all in looking forward to the money that they need and that we addressed last year in the stopgap budget. But last year, we all embraced the stopgap budget together. We worked in a bipartisan fashion. We all worked and said what we needed, what we didn't need, and how we could move forward in helping the people, that the providers, the people that need those services, and keeping our state universities open, which is the main thing that we want to do. What Representative McConaughey talked about is certainty and uncertainty. And that is one of the problems that just having a stopgap budget this year 
rolls that over then into the rest of the people throughout the state of Illinois, including businesses that are thinking of coming here, our healthcare facilities, our universities, our professors in those universities saying, what is going on with the state of Illinois? What are they doing? Are they going to have a budget this year? Moving into 2018, are they going to just move into another year without a budget? That uncertainty controls our fiscal footing in the state of Illinois and getting our, back, our state back to a growing economy. And that's why today this is such an important issue. We know the path we need to, new, to move forward. The Republicans have been very clear about that. This shows us the points that we have been very clear about. Over the last six months, we have talked about these points. There's individual bills on these points. You've seen movement in the Senate on these points. And we are looking forward to working in a bipartisan fashion with the Democrats to move forward into a real budget this year so we can address after the $800 million, that yes is a good cause for the human services and the universities. But we have $14 billion of unpaid bills right now. And what do we say to the other people that are owed those bills that we need to address this year in a real budget for the state of Illinois? Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. We'd be happy to respond to any questions, either of individual members or. Uh, so you say you're willing to work with the Democrats, but there's a do nothing Democrats at the same time. You know, how do you reconcile that? Well. I think one of the things that is perplexing to me is, is last week, uh, two of my Democratic colleagues professed that they didn't believe that the Democrats would give Governor Rahner a budget in his entire career. And, and, and this is the play out of that with the stopgap budget. Illinois needs a real solution. The plane of politics. I will say this, and then I'll let uh, one of my colleagues uh, also answer your question. I will say this. Senator Culleton gets the fact that we need job creation. In the negotiations that we've had with Senator Culleton over the year, he gets the fact that we need business reforms to create jobs as part of the solution. Uh, I can't say the same thing about Speaker Madigan. Uh, he has been, I'll call it numb or do nothing on, on the issues that are concerning to the people of Illinois. Would anyone else like to? I'll, I'll make a comment. <laughs> Last year, as part of the budgeteer of our caucus, we worked together on a framework for a regular budget also. And when that went to the leaders, it did go to all the leaders and then was not cleared by the leaders. We took it upon ourselves, the Democrats and the Republicans. It wasn't just one person that thought of the stopgap. It was all of us together that thought of that. And so we were all together last year on that. But we, didn't, we did that to pay out the universities, pay out the human services. But that was not a plan that was to go forward in the next year. The plan was do the stopgap, come back, and do a regular, full-blown budget for this year. And that's what we need to do. Again, the entire state of Illinois, their financial responsibilities rely on having a full budget. We're here today collectively representing the two Republican caucuses. Um, I can't imagine the governor wouldn't be in support of these things because these are what the people of Illinois are crying for. Does he know you're doing this? Did you check with his staff on this? I, I, I assume he follows the press uh, room. Did you, did you, I mean, if you've been close to his office lately, haven't, you know, did you communicate with them about this? I think I told him we were coming down for a press conference. Oh, okay. Well, oh, oh. Maybe it should be lots of drastic cuts and just not have any new revenue, and that's just the way it is? The reality, I think, <clears throat> is that both assemblies are controlled by the Democrats, and that uh, to balance a budget based solely on cuts with Democratic control of the General Assembly is not likely. I believe that what S S Senator uh, McCarter McConkey presented is a realistic view of what a cuts budget would look like. And I compliment them for making the, the tough decisions to put that out. 
Last week, I presented a budget that had a mixture of cuts. I think the people of Illinois are demanding uh, government reforms uh, that would reduce the size of spending. And the budget I presented was a budget that was about a 50-50 proposition. Uh, about half of the balancing was due to cuts and half was uh, based on uh, revenue, short-term revenue is that we need. So uh, there are several mixes, but I think the reality is uh, we realize that the Democrats control the General Assembly and there, there needs to be under their control both cuts and there needs to be some revenues, uh, but a stopgap is not the solution. I think what we need to be focused on is passing a comprehensive balanced budget that gives predictability for more than just a couple of months. When we've reviewed this proposal, the stopgap proposal, over the last not even 24 hours, uh, we've already had some questions about why certain uh, dollar amounts were appropriated to, to different agencies and organizations. We're not sure how long it'll last. Uh, that's, I think, part of the problem that these agencies have dealt with, is that when you're given only the opportunity for a stopgap or a lifeline, uh, you, you struggle to figure out how that's going to provide any kind of predictability for you in, in months going forward. We're committed to using every legislative uh, day that we have available to us to providing a comprehensive balanced budget that gives predictability to, to every state organization, to every organization that receives grants or funding from the state of Illinois. Uh, they need to know that, that they have a, a lifeline beyond just the very immediate future. Um, kicking the can down the road by, by hopping from one stopgap to the next does not accomplish that. And it may actually make it more difficult for us to come to a, a budget negotiation later. We'll look at the difference in approach between Republicans and Democrats in the Capitol. Republicans, we're standing here together, united today, to say that we're willing to negotiate a comprehensive balanced budget. On the Democratic side, you've heard um, several people say, I don't think we'll have a budget till 2019. We don't think that's an acceptable approach. We don't think that's a, that's a feasible approach. And so to continue to change stopgap after stopgap is not a way to get us through 2019. We need a budget. We're here today to negotiate that, and we're all willing to do that. You know, term limits are, I think, uh, a progressive way in bringing fresh ideas into states that have them. Uh, we, we certainly have a poster child for term limits, and that's Mike Madigan. Yes, I've been here about 20 years, served eight years in the House and, and then in the Senate. Uh, and, and I believe uh, firmly, and I have supported term limits uh, throughout my career, uh, particularly when it comes to leaders. And what I'll say is that we need a balanced budget, but we also need a program that includes these things. Um, and, and let me just say, it's not just Republicans who are here supporting this. John Culleton has supported freezing property taxes. John Culleton has supported spending caps. John Culleton has supported job-creating reforms, term limits, and pension reforms. <laughs> yes, he has. And uh, he needs to go further, and we'll keep working on that. But we need a balanced budget. A stopgap budget is not the solution. And that budget needs to incorporate this, and it's not just Republicans, although we're united, it is also Democrats who understand we need this. Thank you very much. Um, this was put together by the 12 of us. Uh, Leader Redonio supports what we're talking about. Thank you.